two over four, not so bad. And I see a coach in him trying to build the national team. And um, I saw someone mention it somewhere that this guy had actually started working before he started working. So if you know what that means, he looks like a very promising guy. And um, I also like his reaction to press. I like his reactions to the media when questions are being raised and speculations about his style of play. He just tells people, come on, leave me. Let me do my stuff. I know what I'm doing. I want the best for the Super Eagles. He's so delighted. He's excited to work for the Super Eagles team and um, the Sao Tome victory. A lot of people will say Sao Tome isn't a worthy team to play against. It's not a, a team worthy enough to give you that bragging right. But I'll tell you something. I'll just make a comparison, a simple comparison between Sao Tome and another team. And that is an European team. Guess what the team is? Iceland. So a lot of people argue that Sao Tome has just a population of 214,400 people. That is the 2021 stats, the population figure for Sao Tome, 214,400. But let's look at the same 2021 population statistics for Iceland, 371,000. So we have Sao Tome with 214,000 people and Iceland, 371,000 people. Pretty much small nations, small islands. So as you can see, I'll take you through the performances of um, Iceland. So basically, size the size of a nation does not really dis determine, maybe just a little, but it does not 100% determine how a team should perform. Check out the stats of Iceland as at today. They are not doing badly. They are not doing badly, even though they previously lost to Spain, Germany, with like four goal margin, four zero, five zero. They still gave Poland a tough game. They had a play the two-two draw. They still gave Belgium a tough time. They lost, but two-one to Belgium. And then let me take it down memory lane. The Euros, Euros, Euros twenty sixteen. Let me remind you that Iceland qualified as the second in that group, and I think on the table. We should have up to eight, eight European teams trying to qualify for the um, Euros. Netherlands, Czech Republic were put in that group. And Iceland was able to make it out as second. And then, during the main tournament, Iceland finished second of their group. The same group that had Portugal and Austria. Respectively, both teams, Portugal and Austria, finished up below um, Iceland. And somehow, Portugal will eventually go on to win that particular tournament to be crowned um, the Euro 2016 champions after beating France. So, um, even after the group stage that um, Iceland definitely qualified from, Iceland went on to shock England. And beats England. Iceland defeated England two goals to one. But then Iceland will come to the end of the road when they met France and they were trashed 5 0. And France went on to play um, Portugal and then Portugal will beat them to win the tournament. Then, um, if you look at um, World Cup qualifiers, I think for the 2018 World Cup in Russia, um, mm, Iceland, um, Iceland did perfectly well. I think Iceland finished. Um, I think Iceland finished first or second on that group. I even think in first, followed by Ukraine. There was Turkey also on that group. So I tell you, I am so happy for the fact that um, we have teams like Sao Tome coming up. These are guys that are not really known in terms of um, that football standard, even in Africa. But again, kudos to CAF with their initiative to introduce more teams into um, the Nations Cup. And that's gives us that exposure to you know it gives new teams the exposure to play football on the professional level because right now we have teams like Sao Tome, we have Eswatini, we have the likes of Comoros and these guys keep improving by the day. Lesotho, these guys keep coming up, Sudan, South and Sudan. Yeah, so it's good news. It's good news and it's a win win for everybody. And then even the teams that we used to know as average teams and now beginning to give top flight teams a run for their money. 
we talk about Gambia, we talk about um, Gabon, even Sierra Leone is really improving. You get, and um, we have other nations in Africa that are beginning to show themselves strong to be powerhouses. Burkina Faso, don't rule those guys out. And we know where Burkina Faso is coming from. So, I tell you, the game against Sao Tome, I like to call it a rehearsal. I would like to call it a practice game. Of course, that is what you should do when the almighty super egos is going to have a face-off with the Sao Tome and Principal. Probably, they don't have players with that experience um, there. They don't have players who have traveled wide to get that experience to play with other top players of the world than them. In fact, when many of these African teams here in Nigeria, Super Eagles, the Shiva, because to them it's a privilege to actually play us and it's just psychological that they are going to be okay with a draw or a loss to us provided it's not so humiliating. So, like I, I mentioned earlier, I love several moves that a coach made and some of them were actually because he's playing a team that is way, way beneath us in terms of ranking so he can actually make some experiments and go away with them. 10 goals, 10 goals passed to the South Tome goalkeeper. How did it happen? I like to say Victor Osime is a very key figure in the Super Eagle squad. He is very instrumental. I mean, um, we've seen this guy grow. He's still a very young guy. And um, even though he struggled with his teams in um, Germany and then Belgium for a while, when he made that move to Lille in France, he did wonders. He did wonders, scored a lot of goals, and then he attracted interest from the great Napoli. And for you to have a player less than 23, taking up the number nine role, taking up that responsibility for a big team as Syria, Syria our giants, Napoli. That is a lot. And he didn't disappoint. He didn't disappoint. Did it first time. He did it again. And if you watch um, Victor Simen play for Napoli, you see that he's a very dangerous, very sharp attacker when it comes to using his head. He's always there. He's got a lot of goals with his head. When you talk about seeing that having the eye for goal from outside the 18 yard box he has a good style of placing the ball right into the corner of the net very fantastic guy his presence is also very motivating to the team even if he does not come up with a goal he gives assists he knows how to build attacks and in europe osimen ranks as one of the best players who released the most shots per game and that is on record so Osimen coming back to the Super Eagles team to get four goals, four goals, and that, the four goals he got actually gave him a record. He's the um, he he's the next person to score four goals in an Afghan game after the great Rashidi Yakini, and now he is on um. He's had quite a number of goals. He has a few goals to score for the Super Eagles to make him the biggest, um, the highest goal scorer ever for the. Super Eagles, um, and then um, OC men. If you watch the game, going through the game of um, Sao Tome, this game versus Sao Tome and Principe, you can actually see him make moves. He also he could have even gotten more than four goals. If there was a goal he had disallowed for offside, and then there was um, this close range miss that he had. That was on the 22nd minute. That came off a corner kick. It was a close range header, and the keeper had to save that one. And then um, you remember, towards the end of the game, after he had scored his four goals, he hits the upright, he hits the post, and then um, he didn't get that goal. And uh, if you watch the goal Moses Simon scored with that assist from Osime, that was on the 28th minute. You can tell how sharp a striker Osimen is. He always knows how to get something on the ball. He knows how to just slide in his long legs out there, got something on the ball, and um, made a cut back to Moses Simon, who was able to guide that into the net. So, again, I want to come back to the um, comparison between Nigeria and Sao Tome. If you say 
there is so much gap in terms of quality i don't really i will not really really agree to that because now um picking victor simon for instance as the foggo hero from that game let's take a look at them or that top strikers or that's top players in the world how many players actually score four five six goals in a competitive game because victor Osime could have even gotten six or maybe seven goals erin Haaland, the goal machine yeah he scores a lot of goals and um in the bundesliga um Lewandowski scores a lot of goals in the bundesliga but that, let's talk about facing off um teams that are very low in quality so how many goals does erin Haaland score whenever he plays a friendly game against a very low ranked african team how many goals does Lewandowski get even the likes of cristiano ronaldo cristiano ronaldo yes he's a goal scoring machine especially um as far as the euros have it on record playing teams of um lower quality but i don't see ronaldo getting six goals against a particular team on that competitive level i mean a lowly ranked side so even um in the nations league uh, or some somehow along um along the qualifiers for the euros where you had ronaldo play portugal play against several uh, low ranked team in europe the likes of Lativa, I think Lithuania, um, Hungary at the time. Ronaldo scored up several goals against these teams. But check it. If you were going to measure it per game, how many of these goals did he score per game? He could score hat tricks here and there, score. But then we we'll still give him the acknowledgement for that. And Victor Osimen has done just that. You see, Victor Osimen demonstrated how. You can be a lethal striker. I know we will find it a bit difficult against a team that is that has a better quality, but then you you, you can see that Osima is not and an easy finish. ready to miss not any chance. He just Victor has Ozyman, that his second goal of the afternoon at six. And Nigeria's and then, um, fourth. Sadiq Umar. Sadiq Umar has proven himself even with the um, junior team of the um, night of, of Nigeria and um, even um, with Almeria just um led them to their promotion he was the highest goal scorer in la liga two and they won the league to make it to the la liga you're going to be seeing them in la liga facing the likes of barcelona real madrid villarreal atletico madrid in the 20 22 20, 23 season so that's also a player of quality and then that brings me back to what i had talked about earlier our attack our attack needs to really be fortified we have the resources to go out there but then we need to have the right selections and i would really love if kelechi here he here not sure he can find his way back to the team i like to see he here not sure play from the right and i like to see lukman play from the left but we have a lot of options we can still have someone else being thrown there if it's a 4-3-3 or if it's a 4-2-2 we we'll just have can have Dessas. Dessas is also a very great player. If you follow him in Europe, you see that he carried his team on his shoulders during the season that just got to an end. So basically, I see a bright start. I see a bright start for Joseph Zero, and um, I wish him all the best. Good luck. Well, enough said. So I just need you to leave your comments. I didn't know I was even going to make this video, but I've done it right now because I felt I needed to jump on this. I needed to be on the aftermath of the particular encounter. It was a very interesting one, and um, it was really entertaining. A table free kick. You saw that. You saw goals from Teremofi scored. His first goal was a very beautiful one, and um, man scored beautiful headers. He showed how strong he is in the air and how he can easily beat people to the ball yes and sometimes the goalkeeper will even be second to him to get those balls and um you saw Ahmed Musa got an assist Zaidu Sanusi getting an assist and um you know it was a brilliant game Lukman of course got his first goal for the Super Eagles and um big one big one big one and um towards the end of the game and stoppage time um Dennis drew that foul from the defender 
and he won the penalty. Then he stepped up confidently, took it himself, and whew, that was 10 nil. So please leave a comment, leave your comments below, and uh, let me just see your own reaction to this. And um, if you want to counter me, if you feel um, you like to add something to what I've said, you can just leave your comments down below. And um, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Tap the thumbs up icon. And then you can share to other people so we know what they think about Joseph Pizarro. For now, peace. I remain the coachman.